And for the second part of class today, we're going to talk about uh, the other measure of position besides percentiles, and that is z-scores or standard scores. There my, um, gotta straighten my thing here so that you can see the whole board. There, that's pretty decent. Okay, so welcome back to class. Um, we're going to talk about z-scores or standard scores during this part of class. So if you ran into any questions while over the break that you'd like for me to cover, then if you will wait until I finish doing this part, and I'll be glad to answer those questions. So um, before we look at the formula for z-score, and this, by the way, is a really important topic because we're going to be talking about z-scores and working with z-scores for the rest of the semester. So this is one of the big things that you make, need to make sure you understand. Um, but first, let me talk about what a z-score is. So I'm going to refer back to this picture, which was the a picture that we drew for the empirical rule. We talked about this last time. Remember, the empirical rule is the rule that says if a data distribution has a bell shape, then we expect uh, six, a certain percentage to be within one standard deviation, 95% uh, is within two standard deviations, and 99.7% is within three standard deviations. Now, there can be data values more than three standard deviations on either side of the mean that's here in the middle. But um, that's really unusual. It's really unusual for a, a data value to be more than three standard deviations from the mean. In fact, they're actually going to call um, a data value unusual. I can spell unusual. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to call a data value, the occurrence of a data value, unusual if it's more than two standard deviations from the mean. And here's why. Let's show where those unusual values are. So here's the mean. Here's two standard deviations above the mean. So anything that falls in here would be unusual. Let's come back over here. If there are two standard deviations below the mean, that's also unusual. Now remember that the percentage by the empirical rule, the percentage of data values that will be within two standard deviations of the mean is 95%. So basically what we're saying is that if it's in the outside 5%, okay, so you have 2.5% here and 2.5% here, if it's in that, and these things should look like they're the same size. So any data values that are in that outside 5%, uh, we're going to call unusual, statistically speaking. Now, let's talk about what a z-score is. A z-score has to do with how many standard deviations a data value is from the mean. So the mean is zero away from itself. So the z-score for the mean is zero because it, it's equal to itself. It's not bigger than itself. It's not less than itself. It's equal to itself. So its distance from the mean is zero. Okay. So if you have a data value that's one standard deviation above the mean, then the z-score for that would be one because it's one standard deviation larger. For this data, any data value that was exactly two standard deviations from the mean, the z-score would be two because it's two standard deviations above the mean. So, um, and then this one, the z-score would be three. And then when we go to values that are less than the mean, they're going to have negative z-scores. So for the data value that's one standard deviation below the mean, its z-score will be negative one. 
the z-score for this one will be negative 2, and the z-score for this one will be negative 3. So we can take any data set, and we can find the mean, and then we can give a z-score for any data value based on this scale. A z, you can think of it as a z-scale or a standard scale. And when we change to z-scores like that, that's called standardizing that variable or standardizing that data value. So z-scores, another word for it is standard scores, because this is a way we can take any data set, because these numbers could be anything. So say they were ages. You can imagine what ages would be, like average age of a TCC student. Maybe that would be at, I don't know, 22 or 23, and then you'd go from there. Uh, but if you're talking about weights, you know, your mean wouldn't be 22 or 23, it'd be something else, and you'd go from there. So every data set has a different mean and uh, standard deviation. But you can standardize any data set by converting to z-scores, in which case the mean, the z-score for the mean will always be zero. And then you will number this scale. These would be your x's here. If you number it by the z-scores, it looks like a number line with zero in the middle and the positive numbers to the right and the negative numbers to the left. And you can have in-between values. Like you can have, if you had a data value that fell exactly halfway, its z-score would be 1.5. Now we have a formula to find z-scores, and that formula is in your formula sheet. So I'm going to go to your formula sheet and share that with you so we can look at that formula for z-score. And this is number 7. And you see it's written both in words and with a formula. I'm going to write it with a formula here. Notice with a z-score, you start with the data value and you subtract the mean. That gives you the distance from the mean. And then when you divide by the standard deviation, that tells you how many standard deviations it is from the mean. So a standard score really is, or the z-score is, the number of standard deviations from the mean. And I'm going to show you this in just a minute. I know you can't see it that well. So write down, while I have that up, if you haven't printed off this formula sheet, go ahead and write this down in your notes, the formula for finding standard score. And I'm going to erase this picture now. And then I will share this with you so that you can see it. So a z-score represents the number of standard deviations from the mean. And when we label a data set using z-scores, we'll put zero in the middle. And then we'll go one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And so a lot of times we like to standardize data values, find their z-score, because then we can learn, uh, look at tables and learn certain things about them. Our formula for finding the z-score, if it's a population data set, it's going to look like this. x minus mu divided by sigma. X is the data value. Mu is the mean. And sigma is the standard deviation. Now, if it's a sample, the formula is the same, but the symbols are different. So if you're doing a sample, it would look like X minus X bar divided by S. And then this would be the formula for population. No, it's the same formula. We just have different symbols. So instead of mu for the mean, we have x bar is the mean if it's a sample. And s is the standard deviation if it's a sample. So let's take a problem. If you have my stat lab open, um, I'm going to actually choose a problem. I can't remember where the first one is that does um, z-scores. Really, the first one is number seven, and that's one where I told you to show the work. 
So I think I'll do number seven and show you what I would want you to put on the show work, okay? So let's look at number seven. And I'm going to leave that formula there. And I'm looking at my number seven. If you have my stat lab open, you look at number seven too. And you'll see that it says show work. I'm going to try to remember to put that at the beginning of any question on which I expect you to show work, just as a reminder so you don't forget to do that. Because if you don't show work on one where I've asked you to, then you won't get credit for that question. So this one says the ages of the winners of a cycling tur tournament are approximately bell-shaped. Okay, so I can draw a little. So I'm going to draw like that. And it says the mean age is 28.9. So I'm going to put 28.9. Now, this is a data value, so this is X's. And it says the standard deviation is 3.2, which means if I go to the right, I could find the data values here by adding 3.2 three times, and I could find the data values to the left by subtracting. 3.2 three times. I'm not going to do that just yet. Then it says the winner in one recent year was 21 years old. So like this is our example. They're giving us a data value. The winner was 21. Okay, so that's a data value. That's an X. And then it says in the show workspace, write the formula for finding a Z score. So we're looking at our show workspace. So following directions, and always be careful to follow directions. It says the first thing I want you to do in the show workspace is write the formula for finding a z-score. OK, there's the formula. That would be the first thing I'd write. Now, um, I've talked to a few of you about it is difficult to draw with the mouse. You're not going to be able to upload pictures in the homework, in the, I mean on the test. So don't upload pictures while you're doing your homework because that's not practicing the test situation. You have two ways you can do this. There are two tools in the show work. There's an A and then there's a pencil. Okay, so if you click on A, you'll be able to type. And if you click on the pencil, that means you're going to draw. And you can draw, but you have to either draw with the mouse, unless you have a touch screen, in which case you can draw with a stylus. But apparently, I think Temperance told me that it's hard to draw with your finger. So you're probably going to need a stylus if you want to do the draw. And that's what I use when I draw on that. Another thing that you have available to you in the show work, and I wanted to tell you this. I'm going to write my thing over here. X was 21. So let's talk about in the show work. There's also a thing that says background. And there's a drop down. And you can choose, if you want to, a lined paper is one of your choices. I find that helpful. You don't have to use it. You can just use the blank show workspace. There's also a grid. You can use graph. You can choose graph paper. That one's OK. I find the grids a little bit um, busy myself, but I like the lined paper. So, but you can choose a different background. You can also choose different colors. And you can highlight something that you've done and you can bold it if you type it. <clears throat> so, uh, you're going to either type or draw. So, the first thing I asked you to do was this. So, since that's the first thing in the instructions, that would be a thing I'd look for for part of the points. Then, so I drew that, and then it says, show the calculation to answer part A. Part A says to transfer the de uh, transform the age to a z-score. Remember, the age was 21. So for my part A, I want to show the work for calculating the z-score. So 21, we can see 21 would be way down here somewhere. We can subtract 3.2 and subtract 3.2 and subtract 3.2. And so it, it's in there somewhere to the left because it's smaller than the mean. 
but they want me to write the z-score for it. So here's my work for finding the z-score, and always write z equals every time. Even when you're practicing on homework, write z equals, and write the formula, and then rewrite z equals. If you label things, it makes everything so much easier if you just label everything and keep it neat and organized. So what I'm going to put in place of x, that's this. This is the x. The data value always goes first. Minus, now I need the mean. Remember they told me the mean up here was 28.9. Divided by the standard deviation, and they told me the standard deviation. You see, there was the mean and the standard deviation that was given. So I'm going to divide this by 3.2. I'm going to make a suggestion on your formula for the z-score. Those parentheses are not on the formula sheet, but you should put them in because when you put it in the calculator, you want to use those parentheses, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. So those parentheses are important. So now I'm just going to punch it in my calculator just like this. Kendra, do you have a question? Okay, so I was trying to figure out how you got the three. It was given in the problem. They they told me in the problem, in the question, that the standard deviation was 3.2. That was given. Okay. As this was, this was given. So they told me those two numbers. And then they gave me this data value. And they said, change it to a z-score. So I'm using this formula. So do you see in place of x, I put the data value. In place of mu, I put the mean. And in place of sigma, I put, OK? Now, notice I got this big old long number. Well, we have a rounding rule for z-scores. So let's talk about the rounding rule for z-scores. And this rounding rule, so far all of our rounding rules have been the same. So far, every rounding rule we've had has been one place past the data. OK, that's not the rounding rule for z-scores. For z-scores, we always take it out two places. So z-scores. should be rounded to two places. And on this one, it says round to two places. So I think my stat lab is pretty consistent with this rounding rule for the z-scores. So z-scores should be rounded to two places. So that would be that number there. And since that number there, I don't care about those, that one's five, or that's five plus, so that means I'm going to add one to that six. And so my z-score for this is, and I'm going to label it again, because I love labels, 2.4, negative 2.47. So I'm going to put that in as my answer. Negative 2.47. And then the B part says, interpret the results. And it has a sentence. It says, an age of 21 is about, so they're wanting you to put in words what this means. That means that 21 is 2.47 standard deviations to the left of the mean, to the left because it came out negative. So I'm going to put in, the first blank, 2.47 standard deviations below, to the left means below the mean. And then it's asking me, now remember what I told you before, here was, one, if you're doing z's, this was negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, the mean is 0, and 1, 2, 3. And remember me telling you that if it's 
over here or over here, it's unusual. If it's, if it's to the left of negative 2 on the z-score or to the right of positive 2, it's considered unusual. Well, negative 2.47 is to the left. It would be like right here. It would be to the left, if I was looking at z-scores, that would be between negative 2 and negative 3. That means it's over here in my unusual area. So anything with a z-score between negative 2 and positive 2 is not unusual. But if it's to the left, if it has a z-score smaller than negative 2 or bigger than positive 2, it is unusual. So the particular one um, is unusual um, because a z-score outside the range from negative 2 to positive 2 is unusual. And I'm going to check my answer. And that was correct. Now that's basically what z-scores are about. If you have your computer open right now, and if you have my math lab open, I want you to try. Now you're going to have to come back and show work on this. This is going to ask you to show work. But if you go to, I think the next one doesn't ask you to show work. So if you want to do number eight instead, Eight is almost exactly like this. So if you have your computer open and you have my stat lab open and you're able to, I want you to now go do number seven or number eight. If you do number seven, though, you're going to need to show work in the show workspace. So but you can do that if you want to practice that um, showing work and see if you have any problems so we can deal with that now. But that's essentially all that we had left to cover in this section. So I'm going to stop the recording.